여러분 나는 웃긴 사람 <웃음> 웃긴 사람 what's good look at my fit hey guys guess who's ovulating me <laughs> so hey guys you read the you <laughs> look you can read i assume if you can't then i'm just gonna blame north american education system on that one um if you're from america so what is up guys it is me i'm back with long hair we love a box braid moment and i'm gonna be talking to you guys about every concert i've ever been to which is 24 concerts um in my last videos i talked about like oh i've been to like 30 concerts um that wasn't true i mean it's true but once I actually like wrote down all the concerts I've been to, I counted 24, hold on. 24 concerts, that's right, my type. So I'm gonna do a like get ready with me type of thing while I'm talking about every concert I've been to in order, starting from Big Time Rush to my latest concert, which was Super M. So we're gonna get into it. I'm not sure what look I'm gonna do today. It'll look cute because I mean, come on. Just, I'm cute, right? I mean. It, look I, okay I don't know I wanted to make a video like this because a lot of my videos that you guys know me for is just like you know me sitting down talking to you guys like explaining stuff to you basically teaching you stuff so I want to like kind of step back and um, just pretend like I'm like your friend I'm telling you about all the crazy concert experiences I've had because that's exactly what I am and that's what we're doing so I'm gonna get all my makeup and we're just gonna have some fun I gotta wet this Fuck! I don't really do a lot when it comes to makeup. I usually do like neutral lips, maybe pink or something. And then I do like different color eyes. I don't know. So. so let's talk about my first concert. My first concert was Big Time Rush. That's right. Uh, 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 oh. And honestly, it was really fun because the thing about your first concert is that like, you don't really have a lot of expectations for it. I mean, I was like 12 years old. So for me, I was just like, oh my God, like Big Time Rush, like basically the 2011 version of me's Opa's, like I was like freaking out. And I remember it was my first concert. My granddad was freaking out. Cause my granddad's like, oh my God, like don't go far away and blah, blah, blah. And I'm from um, Michigan. So like shout out to Michigan. And um, it was in Grand Rapids. And I never went that far like by myself and I was like 12 years old. And so my aunt took me. And so the main thing I probably learned from that concert, like the highlight was definitely, um, cause I had a floor seat. Ooh, she had a floor seat to Big Time Rush. I know I'm so special. The members of the group were like on different sides of the floor, like they on the outer sides of the floor and they like came down to like, you know, walk and stuff and security was there. And like, I was in the center of the floor and I remember like running over to the right side cause James, James is right there. And like, I didn't really stand James. Like I was like, okay, like he's like a pretty boy. Like that's it. But I like Carlos, Carlos is my bae, but now he's like married with like three kids. So I'm just like, um, how old am I? And so I remember, you know, James was like right there and like, he like, we like touched. <laughs> like my arm, like I touched his arm, like my right hand, I remember this, like my right hand touched his arm and it was so wetty. And I was like, <laughs> did that actually happen to me? Or uh, nani, like uh, ya, like what? So yeah, Big Time Rush. The main thing I learned from that concert is like, if they're like next to you and like they're on the floor and stuff, like it's okay to like move around a little bit. And you know, I always say, you know, there's only two security guards and there's 30 of us, so who's gonna win, you know? I'm just kidding, please do not treat your security guards poorly. Okay, they're there to keep their jobs and to protect you, so don't be mean. <laughs> that was actually a really fun time. My first concert, I literally touched a member of the band's like arm, like that, the blessing. I was like, I have to keep doing this. And I did, obviously, because I went to like 23 more concerts. The next concert I went to was One Direction. Um, that's what I mean, can be beautiful. Ugh, kings of profiting off of my insecurity, we stand. My One Direction concert, I saw them while they were on the Where We Are tour. Um, I believe it was August 2014 and it was actually Liam's birthday, so more concert luck. And the one thing I really learned from that concert, even though I passed out before they even got on the stage because like they were showing like the video. If I could find that video of me like almost passing out, of me passing out that would be iconic but i was like they're real like they're real like it really hit me like i was like wow like niles up there on the screen and like <sighs> like i was a nile girl like hardcore like nile girl stand up um 
because we underrated as fuck. Um, everybody be talking about Harry girls and Louvi girls, now girls, we really kept the fan together and that's on period love. Anyway, I like remember my friend, cause she wasn't like a huge One Direction fan and like her dad and her like took me like, cause I bought an extra seat, you know, for someone to take me because I was think I was like 15 at the time. And his, her dad actually volunteered to like buy a seat for himself so that he could like be there with us. But it was like in the 400s, so it was just like him by himself, like around a bunch of girls and their moms. And honestly, I really appreciate them like doing that for me, even though like we're not friends anymore. I really appreciate that. So shout out to, you know who you are. <laughs> um, and I remember just really enjoying myself. But one thing that I didn't, that I kind of still regret, even though it's been almost like, what six years maybe seven or eight at this point honestly um it's the fact that like i didn't buy the merch i wanted and even though i had the money to buy like a t-shirt for the tour my friend was like you're really gonna spend 40 dollars on a t-shirt like i i i succumbed to peer pressure and i let her basically peer pressure me into not buying the thing that i wanted so my next tip is to always buy what you want always buy the merch that you want it doesn't matter what other people think if you can afford it then get it because even though it's 2020 and that happened like 2014, yeah, like six years ago, I still low key have regrets. And it's like, all I have now is like a shitty lanyard. And I'm like, I didn't even want this, but like my friend got it and it was like 10 bucks. And I was like, I might as well, you know, like whatever. I don't want her making fun of me, but it's like, I don't even talk to her now. So you see how much that mattered? It didn't matter at all. So I had to dampen my beauty blender. Well, it's not a beauty blender. It's a real techniques, whatever this is, because I do not really be feeling those beauty blenders. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna pay $20 for a sponge. I might pay $15 for four of them, but not 20 for one, sis. That's really not <laughs> going down in this neighborhood. So yeah, that's the only thing I regret about that concert. Otherwise, it was amazing. My battery died halfway through it, but you know, it was my second one, so I'll give myself some slack. So the next concert is Fall Out Boy and Wiz Khalifa. A few years ago, Fall Out Boy and Wiz Khalifa went on a tour with each other. Um, and it's probably the most interesting duo in touring history, at least that I encountered besides like Lala or something. A lot of people did not expect them to go together, but you know, I ship it, why not? And um, I remember as soon as like Wiz Khalifa came out, so much weed, weed everywhere. Like, oh my God. You know what? I enjoyed it. And I actually started listening to Wiz Khalifa's music a little bit after that. Um, it was really interesting to see both of like their fan bases like together. That was one thing that I really liked. But one thing that I learned from that that I would probably tell my younger self is to like, it's okay to just have fun and like go crazy at concerts. Like to be like, Woo! like you know, a lot of people around me were not doing that. And I think it had a lot to do with like the fandoms kind of clashing because it, it, I don't know. And maybe because I was so young too, it's like, I don't know. It's like, I saw people around me, they weren't like, you know, jumping around and like having fun. And even though they were like grown men, I was like, oh, I guess I shouldn't do that too. No girl, be weird, go crazy. So my next tip is just to like have fun, like go crazy, do what you want. You know what I mean? Like with restrictions, obviously concert etiquette, but it's like, some people just vibe differently. Like some people are just like, woo, like I really have to rage right now. And some people are just chill. You know what I mean? Like some people just like to stand there, vibe with the music. Not me, bitch. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> I literally cannot see myself in the viewfinder. <laughs> I'm just laying, this ain't a viewfinder. I'm using my phone. <laughs> Y'all really thought I had that uh, YouTube money, huh? <laughs> One day, sis, one day. After the One Direction and Fall Out Boy concerts, it really starts to get muddly, like which ones I saw next. So I'm just gonna go like straight in a line. So the next one I have here is One Republic. I know I did not see One Republic after Fall Out Boy and Wiz Khalifa, but we're gonna talk about it anyway. Um, One Republic sucked, okay? Like no offense, I don't hate One Republic. I actually think they have pretty nice like radio decent songs. I think a good radio play, you know, like he, like I think the Ryan, Ryan Tenor's the main guy in One Republic. And it's something, like his voice is just really off. Like maybe he was sick or something. I don't know, but it was just like, I felt like he was going for notes that like he was not actually able to like reach. Like, I don't know. Uh, but I was like, the whole time I was like, my tip for that, I guess is, they probably won't sound the same at the concert. It really depends on the person. Sorry, Ryan Tedder, um, or whatever your name is, but that, your night, that was not your night. You just were a little off, honey. Um, I don't know what Indiana did to you, but. Okay, so actually I put 
two YouTuber um like kind of things I went to here. I saw Jack Septikai and Dan and Phil um a few years apart from each other. The the one thing I probably learned from those the most is that like I know this is so obvious, but it's like YouTubers really are just people. Like I remember I saw like Dan and Phil like walking, like they were walking to the VIP and everyone was like obviously freaking out because like, oh my God, we're Dan, it's Dan and Phil. They're like in the center. Like I went with this girl that I knew in high school and we were both like obsessed with Dan and Phil. I feel like everyone had a Dan and Phil face, but maybe it's just me <laughs> because like we love them so much. But like, I remember seeing them, they were just walking and they, they, they were looking like, they were like, Cause you, I saw like the top of their heads. Like I was like, cause everyone was crowding around them because like, oh my God, Dan and Phil, like that's what we're all here for. And I could see Dan like, he was so anxious. <laughs> he was like, he did not want to be there low key. Like no hate, not like, oh, he doesn't care about us or anything. But it was just like, it really shows you that like, they really are just, you know, people. Like they're just awkward people. I mean, especially Dan, I mean like, come on now. Like Dan Howell, like, come on, come on stage. One thing I learned from Jack Septikai, I actually was front row for that and I saw him and um, Jack Septikai is actually one of my YouTube crushes, him and Markiplier. Did anyone else have a Markiplier, Jack Septikai and PewDiePie face? Like I really, I like my friends and I we had it hardcore and I, I had VIP for Jack's tour um in Indianapolis because I knew people from there um some of my extended family from there and I saw him there and it was like I did the Q&A thing in like beforehand and I was like really nervous I was like oh my god like Jack Septikai like he's so special blah, blah blah and like it's not that he's not special but it's like I kind of it came to I came to realize that like he's just a guy like I don't know, like he's just a person. Like he's really just out here answering questions like a normal person. Like, I don't know what I expected, but it's like, you know, when you see someone online and it's like, they really hype up that persona. And like, it is a part of them. But at the same time, it's like not, I don't know. Um, It was really nice seeing him live because he was just like, I don't know why, like he's my type. Like, I don't know. I have like seven different types. Like, I don't care like where you're from. You just need to be attractive and that's on period, you know? Like, as long as you're hot, that's really all that matters to me. <laughs> you're all that matters to me. Literally, I wanted to like marry him. I still do low key, but he has a girlfriend, so I can't really say that. Oh, I just said it. <laughs> so that is what I, learned while meeting YouTubers. I don't know why, but it, I guess there's this thing that it's like YouTubers aren't actual celebrities. And it's like, obviously that's not true because they have so much following, they have so much influence, you know, they're influencers, I guess. But I still think of like Jacksepticeye as like a celebrity, but just not in that traditional way. And it's really nice actually to have YouTubers that are like, you know, relatable and chill and like not so egotistical, you know? I don't mind a little ego because you have to have confidence to like do that and put yourself out there. But you know, it's it was really interesting. I don't know why it was just like, it felt more personable. I don't know. See, like I really have no idea why. So the next concert I have, and this is gonna be very quick, is Skillet. So if you guys don't know Skillet, they're basically kind of like our, I guess they're Christian. I don't know, I went to Christian private school. So like a lot of people listen to Skillet. We were actually allowed to listen to them, but I wasn't allowed to listen to One Direction. So all the people that went to Christian private school, first of all, lo siento. And secondly, are you okay? <laughs> I got invited like with my friends. So it's really nice to be invited to concerts because like, you know, people are like, hey, like you wanna go to a concert? And like, to me, that's like the ultimate, like I do. It's kind of like proposing like, oh my God, like you really think I can go to a concert with you and like make your vibes better. But one tip that I would probably tell my younger self is never wear leggings that are not like cotton to a concert, like, or at least like hard nylon or something. Because like I wore like leggings to come, oh my God, I was so sweaty. Like, I don't think it was just like me going through puberty or anything because I've always been pretty skinny, but it was like, it was just so uncomfortable and like it was sweaty and it was like, oh, like it was like, it was kind of like one of those like underground kind of like concerts where it's like in like a venue that no one's ever heard of, you know, like that type of thing. But one thing, just don't wear leggings. Don't wear leggings. Like don't, I don't, at least me, I don't wear leggings anymore because that shit's painful and I got thighs to the hoo-ha. So even though I'm skinny, I do got a little bit of thigh and booty. So that's why I'd be like, mm, pass. <laughs> Ooh, okay, actually this is this is next for this. So next is 17. 
Say the name. 17. First K-pop concert was actually Card, but I'll talk about them after this. But 17 was my first like boy group concert. So this was so much fun. Um, This was probably like one of my favorite concert experiences. If I have to rank them. What do I do after this? I'm gonna do my, I'm gonna do my this. I'm gonna do my this. I actually have not used a lot of these shades that much. So I don't know if they're good or bad, but if they're bad, you can clown me. I'll give you permission. Did you see my neck? Did you see my neck? So basically for 17, the one thing that I did that really set apart like all my other concert experiences is this was the first time that I actually took something to like an actual concert. I remember like a few months before the concert, I was like, ugh, like this is my first like K-pop boy group concert, you know, like full group, like 17, cause I stamped them hardcore back then. Um, I was like, oh my God, like I really have to show out, like what can I do? And so I saw this article on MTV's website about how these fans for Taylor Swift's 1989 tour made this like life-size cardboard cutout of Shawn Mendes cause he was an opener along with Vance Joy, I think he is, like rip, rip tie dude. And I was like, oh my God, like I saw that article and I immediately was like, s -Coops. I have to do that for s -Coops. cause s -Coops is my daddy, s -Coops is my bias, like, he be really looking good, like, god damn. And so basically, I remember like, I was like, okay, I gotta do s -Coops, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so I made this life-size cutout of s -Coops, and I had a seat right in the center of like the second, because it was at Rosemont Theater. s -Coops saw my sign, that ass, because I was right in the center of the second level, like the balcony, I think it is. And then everyone around me, because we were trying to get his attention, we were like, s -Coops! And then like, he was like, and everyone was like, oh my god! <laughs> it was so much fun. Like, and and the best part about it is that I wasn't like obstructing anyone's view. It was like it was he was it was like just in front of me, you know. Like maybe I should make a tutorial on like how to make a life size cutout of like your favorite person because honestly that was like hella fun. And like even if he didn't see it, it was still fun because I had it like on my back and I was like walking around the venue like passing out banners for like a fan project, and so. Everyone was like, oh my God, you're that s -Coops girl. Oh my God, you <laughs> So that was really fun. Next concert is the concert before this, which was Card. So Card was literally my first K-pop concert, like my first Korean pop concert. Um, even though I consider Seventeen to be my first like group concert, because when I saw Card, they didn't actually have like an album out yet. <laughs> they only had like, oh na na and don't recall. And they did like covers at the concert. And it was actually so much fun. They've they're really good with like stage presence and stuff. Like they honestly shook me a little bit, like shooky shooky, like that's me. And so that was really exciting and fun. So one thing I've learned from that concert um, is to just be on time. Um, it's really simple, but I was actually with someone who, um, I went with the same girl who I went to with One Direction. And it's like, that was kind of like when our friendship was getting like weird. And like, literally she like got in the shower, like 10 minutes before we had to leave. And we were almost literally late. Like we, as soon as we got there, they started. And I'm just like, and we were stuck in like Chicago traffic. Like we were coming out from like an hour and a half. And I'm just like, I was really excited to see this group. And like, you know, we're running late because she wanted to take a shower. And I'm like, bitch, you can take a shower later. I gotta see daddy BF, like, what are you doing? And so basically like that sucked, you know, like having to wait on her and stuff. But the main thing is just like, go extra, extra early. Like, even if you think like, you're gonna be there early, you're not. Especially if it's like around 5 p.m. and you're going to Chicago. I, see, I don't know what this side is doing. I don't know what this side is. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I really thought I was doing something, but Chaji Ma, I was, I was not doing shit to. I'm Karibu now. I'm gonna start saying random Korean shit throughout the video. Yorobum, nanan, hukin saram. Hukin saram, what's good? My next concert, I, this is all in 2017. So I believe my next concert was Lady Gaga, <laughs> Lady Gaga. Now I've actually been a huge fan of Lady Gaga literally since I was like nine years old. As soon as I saw her, it was like love at first sight. Like, you know, when couples be like, or when the guy's like, as soon as I saw her, I knew she was the one. That's how I felt with Lady Gaga. Like literally I saw her, I was like, as soon as I saw her in 2010 when I was a nine year old, I knew she was my mom. <laughs> so I actually saw her on the Joanne World Tour. 
and it was it was like really fun i wish i would have been able to see her on the monster ball because that was like my favorite tour from her one thing i definitely learned from that concert is like go with someone who like if you can either go with someone who you know you're going to enjoy going with or go by yourself period because um the same friend who i saw a card with like i saw lady gaga with her and it was like our friendship was slowly like dwindling like it was like senior year of high school you know it's like where everyone's ready to go um i went to the concert with her and like i was like obviously i had a great time but low-key i was miserable because i was literally there with someone who i didn't even want to be with like i didn't even want to go with and i told myself i was like i'm never going to go to a concert with someone who doesn't want to go ever again because it really sours the mood because like you're, you're vibing you've been waiting like you're basically half your life to see all these songs like in concert like you know all this stuff and she's just like killing your vibe and i'm just like oh i'm never gonna do that again <laughs> Hashtag know your self worth. So the next concert I went to, I, was this even count as a concert? The next event I went to was Lollapalooza 2018. Now, if you guys remember anything about Lollapalooza 2018, I saw them in Chicago, the original like place for Lala at Grant Park. And I actually went with someone who was my former friend and we actually had a really good time. But um, the one thing that I probably would have done differently was basically to go by myself yeah so it's not like i said like it's not that like i hate these people like it's literally just like i should have just gone by myself i would have been so much better like even though i was like 19 i was still like afraid to go by myself uh, i'm not sure why but like she wanted to go like i wanted to go so i was like okay well it can't be that bad um it actually wasn't that bad but it's like i wanted to do certain things like you know, go to the front and like rage, like at Perry's, which is like the EDM stage. And she's really like not into that. Oh my God, no, I did. <laughs> I looked up again. Okay, let me try to fix it. Oh, so I'm gonna go back to what I was talking about. Oh my God, I did it again. I'm not looking up anymore. So basically what, <laughs> I'm like not looking at you now. I'm like, ASMR, your friend hates you, POV, TikTok, POV TikTok, your friend hates you and is not looking at you anymore. So I remember like, it's kind of like the same thing from when I saw Lady Gaga. It's like, know who you're going with. But also, that was one of the first times where I was like, you know what? It's literally A-OK -okay to go to a concert by myself. Like, I was obviously going to concerts by myself before that. But I really, it really solidified for me. It was like, I really don't need anyone to go to concerts with me. It's like, if you can, just go alone. So the next concert in 2018 was probably my top five concerts of all time, which was Reputation Stadium Tour by one of my many queens of pop music. Oh, did I get this on my thing? Um, one of my many pop queens, Taylor Swift. I love Taylor Swift so much. Like I said about Gaga, like, as soon as Taylor started coming out with pop music, like 1989 was my shit, like period, like, you try to tell me, you try to give me an, a better pop album than 1989. You can't because Taylor is superior. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but Taylor um, is a great songwriter. We all know this by now. If you don't know, then you should listen to a lot of her B track. And um, I remember going to the concert and I really dressed to the nines because for Taylor concerts, if you guys don't know, um, she really invites you to like dress up and like be in fun costumes and stuff. And so I had a poster. I made like a, a cut, a cardboard cutout of her like I did for Seventeen. And it literally said, um, Tay Tay got my back. Looking back on it, it's so cringy, but I had fun. So you know what? Who cares? What did I learn from that? I don't think I learned anything. I think I just had a great time. What did I learn from that concert? Nothing bad happened. Oh, except for this guy that was like holding up a poster right in front of my face of like, cause he met Taylor in Chicago and some fans like go around the country and like follow their group, like I did for Super M. But it's like, this guy was, Taylor was literally right by the stage. I think it was during Getaway Car. And like, like I was like right by the stage. I was like, oh my God. And then he literally had this poster right in front of me like this. And I'm like right here. And I'm just like, um, can you move your poster? Like that's so rough. But I'm not bitter about it. 
I don't know. I don't have a lesson. You know, my lesson is is to stream Lover. <laughs> that's my, that's my stream 1989. That's my lesson. I really have no idea. So we're going to move on.